If you're keen on discovering how AI can help minimize your API testing workload, this video is for you. API testers who visit the developer portal with a specific use case in mind would simply wish to test and evaluate APIs with minimal effort. In this video, we'll be exploring how you can try out APIs by leveraging the power of AI with WSO2 API Manager 430. I'm Ashera Silva, a senior software engineer here at WSO2, and I will be your host today. So first, we are going to focus on the topic API testing. To talk about API testing using the developer portal, prior to API Manager 4.3.0, you had to go through the documentation that was available to understand the API's capabilities. And then you had to analyze the available API resources. So you had to go through each of those resources, figure out the payloads, the query parameters, the headers that were needed. Based on those requirements, you had to mock them, and then the, then only you got the option to invoke them and see what the API was capable of. So again, uh, you had to invoke those resources sequentially, right? So say you wanted to uh, order something of the Pizza Shack API, let's say. That's an API that's uh, responsible for ordering pizzas from, a, let's say, a pizzeria. So you have to get the menu, you have to put in an order, and then track its status, and uh, say those three actions. So that involves three resources based on this API definition. So that was three sequential actions. Let's talk about the challenges of manual API testing. Imagine um, there was an API which had multiple resources. So going through each of those uh, resources to figure out the payloads and uh, the parameters that were needed to invoke them, and then the time-consuming process of constructing test samples for each of those resources. That was a task that the API consumer had to do. And the difficulty in optimizing testing paths for efficient coverage. So say your use case was just ordering a pizza uh, using this API. So then they had to figure out what resources and what path to be followed in order to get there. And uh, again, you had to invoke those resources one after the other. Introducing API chat. You can now effortlessly test your APIs by specifying your need in natural language. So you have an API consumer that comes into the developer portal with a simple use case that they want. They simply want to try out the API. So this feature would be a great fit for such a use case. So they come in and give the use case and we execute it on their behalf. So then they can figure out if that API is going to cater to their needs or not. So now we move on to the topic, AI-based API testing. So we have leveraged large language models, uh, as you commonly know, LLMs, to enhance the API testing experience. Mainly the natural language understanding and generation capabilities of the LLM are integral here. Let us talk about how GenAI helped with this automation. So first of all, it gives the ability to understand the API quicker. Rather than going through the API specification manually, we feed the API specification to the LLM. It's able to quickly understand the contents of it. And then generating test samples automatically. So if you wanted to invoke a post resource, say a slash order, then LLM will give you that mock payload based on your open API definition and identifying optimal testing paths. So figuring out what resources need to be invoked to get to your final destination. You specify a use case, we'll get you there using the power of the LLM. Um, so I'll quickly run you through how API chat works. So API consumer comes into the develop portal, right? So they give, they will fire this natural language query to our API chat interface. We send this query plus the API definition to the LLM-based AI service. So from there, that will deduce what API resource we need to invoke. So that will respond with the resource and parameters that are needed if we were to invoke an API. If there's no API invocations involved, it will simply return an LLM response, which is just a string saying, OK, I don't have enough information to get this done. You need to be more specific, something like that. Or when the task is done, my task is completed, something like that. So let's say now the LLM returns a um, resource with parameters. So this says, OK, you need to invoke this resource. Then the API chat will invoke that API. So we have a 
backend service here. So the backend service will then return the API response. And now while we push that API response back to the consumer, we will feed it back to the LLM based AI agent. Uh, that is simply to ask or track. Yeah, do I need to invoke more resources or am I done with this task? So let's say this only involved with one uh, API invocation. So when I feed the response from the first API invocation, it's going to tell me, okay, I have completed the task that you've assigned me. So, and then it's just going to give you a summary based on uh, the task that it already did perform. So then we have the API consumer who will get the list of resources that were invoked, their responses, and the LLM's response, which is like a summary. Um, then some caveats for you. So this is an experimental feature. Um, we say it's experimental because we are constantly working on improving its accuracy and expanding its skill set. So that brings us to the second point, be cautious about hallucinations. So while LLMs are great, they may exhibit some degree of unpredictability at times. So if you see an inaccurate answer, so you know that this is not the proper result that it should give me, uh, you can simply rerun or you can adjust your query. So maybe, so what, what we have to do with LLMs is feed the context to it. So if the context is not descriptive enough, it's gonna be hallucinating. Um, so given the dynamic nature of these LLM based uh, systems, the output may, may vary when you rerun it, when you give a different query, uh, but with the same expectation. So finally, the API definition should be descriptive enough for the LLM to understand your API. If the definitions, descriptions, examples are not descriptive enough, it can't understand your requirements. And now let's run through the benefits of AI-based API testing. We can get through faster testing cycles and also we can improve the developer and tester efficiency and reduce human error. So when we have to deal with uh, mocking those payloads, there can be human errors. And also when identifying a use case and figuring out the applicable resources, the path that we need to follow, there may be human errors involved in that phase as well. Also, we have faster API adoption and upgrade cycles. So when one can understand an API faster, they can adopt it. And when upgrades come, they can simply test the up, uh, upgraded versions and then go to market sooner. And also we have the proactive identification of issues. So when we have an automated way of testing a use case, when there are issues, we can quickly identify them. Also, we have the fast application development. So the sooner one can test the API, subscribe to them, and then thereon, it's a matter of uh, integrating that to the application. So with AI-based API testing, it would make the API consumer's uh, task so much easier. And now let's move on to the demo. So the demo scenario is, imagine there's a quick hit uh, app, which is a food delivery app, and they want to integrate the Pizza Shack's menu and ordering system to that app. Um, so let's meet John, the developer from Quick Kids. He's assigned the task of exploring the Pizza Shack API and integrating it with Quick Kids app. So before I move on to the demo, note that you have to follow the prerequisites that are mentioned in our docs to enable the feature, which I have done already in my setup, but I'll quickly walk you through the um, configurations that you need to do. Here we have the documentation of API chat feature. Step one is to sign into Corio. So you have to navigate to this URL and then sign into Corio. And the second step would be to register your environment. So you follow the steps that are mentioned here and then uh, you go ahead and create something called an on-prem key uh, using these steps. So once you have that on-prem key at hand, your next step would be to configure it with API manager. So you have to add this uh, configuration to the deployment toml file and you have to include the token that you generated from step two right over here. And then uh, we are good with uh, the prerequisites needed for the demo. Uh, so here I have uh, signed into the developer portal uh, with the user John and I have uh, this Pizza API which was previously published from the uh, publisher portal. And uh, let's navigate into this Pizza API. So prior to API Manager 4.3.0, an API consumer who wished to try out this API had to interact with this 
uh, swag editor they had to go uh, invoke these resources mock the required payloads and try out the api using this uh, api console tab and now we have this api chat feature so as i have already pointed out this is an experimental feature and your api is now equipped with an intelligent agent so you can see the warning here it mentions that you must provide an api access token so why we need an API access token is because we do the API invocation on your behalf. So under the hood, we fire those uh, API calls and invoke those resources for you. So let's go ahead and configure that key. So before uh, generating that key, you must have an active subscription. So let's go to the subscriptions page and I have uh, this default application. Uh, let's subscribe to this application and uh, generate keys. Uh, now that that's done, let's go back to the API chat and then uh, go and generate this test key. So we have three sample scenarios here. First one is to invoke all the resources of the API and then the next one is to invoke a single resource and the last one is to invoke an action involving multiple resources. So the query needed for the first scenario would go like uh, invoke all resources. And for the second scenario, we have generated this sample based on this API definition, which mentions get details of order with ID 12345. And uh, this action, which involves multiple resources, has, uh, we have mocked some um, sample query for that scenario as well so for demo purposes i have executed the single resource scenario so when we fire a natural language query like this uh, the api chat internally does this execution on your behalf so based on that we get a 404 response from the back end mentioning that this order is not found and this is the summary that the llm based ai agent returns to the uh, client okay now let's execute some custom queries so first query goes like list all pizza varieties and their cost. So the API resource that was invoked is this uh, slash menu get resource. So we have a 200 response code for this uh, request and it returned all these pizza names and their description price and uh, the icon field. So based on the requirement, uh, this uh, summary specifies all these pizza varieties and their costs. Now we move on to the second query. So it says order spicy Italian pizza and get the order details. Let's see how this action was performed. So first we have this slash menu get resource invocation, which was a 200 response. So there it's looking for this um, spicy Italian pizza. Next step was to uh, invoke this slash order post resource. The pizza type is spicy Italian and the quantity is one. And so the rest of the payload was mocked properly. And uh, the final step was to get the order details. So then it executed this uh, slash order get resource with this order ID as the path parameter. Uh, so we have the response here which uh, returned the order status. So this is the summary that uh, the LLM uh, agent uh, returns mentioning the summary of actions that were performed. So the final query that we'll be using for this demo is uh, this which says place an order for two barbecue chicken bacon pizzas and another order for a Hawaiian barbecue chicken, then mark both orders as delivered and finally delete those orders. So there's uh, quite a bit of tasks that needs to be done here. So let's see how this agent performs. Uh, first it executed this get menu resource to identify these two pizza types, the barbecue chicken bacon pizza and the Hawaiian barbecue chicken. So it identified that barbecue chicken bacon and uh, uh, this Hawaiian barbecue chicken was available and the next step was to place those two orders. So you can see the next two resources were post orders uh, for slash order resource and we have barbecue chicken bacon pizza so the quantity was two there and a single Hawaiian barbecue chicken. So quantity two, quantity one, those two orders gave a 201 response and the next step was to mark both orders as delivered. So you can see the delivered status is false here for those post requests and the next two requests that were fired were basically to convert this uh, delivered status to true. So you can see the order ID here was properly mapped here as the path parameter. So those two put calls were executed as the next step and the final task was to delete those two orders and uh, you can see how those delete requests also were fired properly and it returned this 200 response so the path parameters were mocked properly 
and uh, that concludes our demo session so you can try out uh, this uh, api chat feature and see how it caters to your needs we don't have to worry about the documentation or the nitty gritty details of the api itself you just have to have the requirement and then uh, you're all set to try out the apis and see how it fits your use case and that concludes our session on ai based api testing Feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions or feedback. We'd love to hear from you.